Timing is 73, 74, 75, already 350. Procedure is the same for most two strokes. Spikes dead stock. No modifications to the motor. The motor's never been rebuilt. Stock points. Central tools, dial gauge. Others are similar. This one's metric, so it's a lot easier to use, in my opinion. Already marked off the reference mark on the alternator housing. It's hard to show up on camera, but just blue Sharpie, and then in the middle where the dent is, I have scribed it down. So you have a reference point on the, on the case. In real life, it shows up pretty good. First thing to do is to set the dial gauge to zero. It has not been zeroed, so you have to rotate the crankshaft in the direction of running, which is counterclockwise. And you rotate it, until the needle comes around and starts climbing again and then stops moving before it starts working in the other direction. Move slowly. You do not want to shock the gauge. As it's moving, you can see it's moving up and you can tell at the top of the gauge the little nub is coming up out of the gauge, which means it's moving up and not down, which means you're in the right direction. As the needle moves, it will eventually stop, slow, and stop. And there it is. The gauge is reading the outer face is at 70. The outer face of the gauge rotates. We can rotate this gently until the zero lines up with the big needle hand. And there it is. Now to verify that that's correct, Take the wrench, keep rotating it in the direction, and you'll start seeing the needle move in the the needle will move backwards. That's the piston going down. And then it'll start climbing again. And there it goes. Every one sweep of the big hand, there we go, is one millimeter. Every numbered section is 0 0.10 millimeter, and every one in the middle of it is 0 0.01. So it's one millimeter, then a hundredth of a millimeter, and ten. It stopped moving again on zero. Now, if the needle starts moving back immediately, when I rotate the crank, counterclockwise, that is true top dead center, which it does. That's only moving the crankshaft in the direction of operation, which is counterclockwise. Now, stock timing on these are two millimeters before top dead center. A lot of people like to run them at 1.8 or whatever other timing you happen to be running on, if it's modified or you're somebody else and just like to do things a different way. Anyway, the way I do it is, I'm going to back up the crankshaft in the opposite direction so that the large hand moves back three millimeters. And I'll show you why in a moment. So, one, two, three. Roughly, it's three, three point nine, three point one but it's a little over three. We're going to need this gauge to be at 1.8 when the points open. So, right now we're at three. Now the reason I overswung it is to take up any slack in the crankshaft for the next amount of rotation going back forward. So, if we, we know that inside of the next, we have 1.2 turns to make on this before it hits 1.8. So if I rotate the crankshaft again and counterclockwise, if you watch it, gauge is at zero. That's exactly three millimeters before top dead center. That's two. Two millimeters before top dead center. At that point, the stock timing mark should line up. And if you look down here at the bottom of the motor, 
you look in there, you can see the notch on the rotor, and it lines up with the mark on the case. That's the stock point, but we don't want that. We want 1.8. So since we're at 2, we want 1.8, we have to subtract 0.2 from 2 millimeter, which is going to put the timing pointer at 0.8, which is here. So at that point, it's actually 1.78, but for demonstration, it's close enough. At this point, you can mark the rotor to get it right. In most RDs I've seen, the trailing edge of the mark on the alternator is usually at 1.8. So if you line up the mark here with the trailing edge being the back side of the V cut in the alternator rotor here, that should put you at about 1.8. And you're just verifying that the mark's correct. At this point, they usually take the gauge out, assemble it, and do it with a timing light. But for the sake of posterity, we're going to do it with a spark plug, do it the old school way. And by that, i got to turn on the ignition, keep the lights off, make sure your kill switch is on, middle position. Make sure you have spark, so if you play with the points a little, You'll see the plug sparking. Now, I'm going to roll it forward. You can watch the gauge. The moving crank in the direction of running. I don't know what this motor set at. I think it's at I think it's at 10, but it could 18, but it could be two. Anyway, keep going until the gauge starts moving again. Right there. So that popped. If you look at the gate, it went a little past it. It's 1.7. So we back up again. We'll have to get the slop out of the crank. Go forward. Right there. gauge is at 1.81. Good enough for me. Now to verify you're not at 2.81 or 0.81, roll forward with the gauge. That's one millimeter. And then if the needle lands back on zero, that's 0.8. So one floor evolution was that, and then from here to here is 0.8. Motor is timed. I would recommend a timing gauge, but you can do it this way. With electronic ignition, it's always better to use a, ga a timing light. But uh, that's basically it. Make sure you pull the gauge out before you hit the Kickstarter. And uh, beyond that, should be good to go. Hope this helps somebody.